Yes, I am recording this in my bedroom because it's the only quiet place. <laughs> so I just want to introduce to you my next video, archival. <sighs> really, Kitty? Kitty? Here, you get up here so you can be in the video. How about that? Someone always hears me talking. Hi, you guys. Welcome to the Three Siamese Cats watercolor series. And I thought in the beginning that I would do one video on the black cat, one video on the lighter cat and one video on the darker Siamese chocolate point cat, but I put together the first black cat tutorial and it was a half hour long and I wasn't halfway done. So I decided to at least cut that one up into two sessions. So this is session two and in this session I will show you how I do the last little bit of details and a lot of times the little tiny details take as much time as the first two or three big washes that I do, which are already done. So now you'll see me use gouache and the gel pen and my scrubber and all that to refine the painting. So just remember, if you want to speed up this video, you can go into the little, um, it's like a little gear underneath this video and you can speed me up to one and a half to two times speed. And yeah, because sometimes I talk kind of slow, especially when I'm painting. <laughs> So sorry about that, but you can fix it. There's something you can do, be empowered. Anyway, wow, can you really? <laughs> Remember if you want to see all the videos in this series right away, join my Patreon. And if I already have them up in public, you can go to a playlist in my playlist tab and you will find the collection there. Same with the other recent paintings I've done and a few old ones too. I have a Cardinal tutorial series, a German Shepherd tutorial series, and the Bengal Cat tutorial series all have their own playlists so they're easier to watch in succession for you. Let's get started. So I'm just continuing to work on this black cat and as you can see, I've got everything pretty much blocked in. I probably could call it done if I didn't want to completely refine it and if I wanted to keep it really loose. But since it's a commission and owners like more detail than less detail, I'm going to continue working on it. And right now I'm putting in a tea consistency amount of phthalo blue just to punch up some of those medium tones, light medium tones really, on the tip of his nose and on his... Um, right cheek, our left, that's phthalo blue in there and I'm using it kind of as an underpainting for what will later be another layer of lamp black on top of that just to provide a little bit of interest because phthalo blue is a really bright color so I just wanted to brighten that up and echo the colors also that I have put in the background so it kind of ties the painting together if in some way you, especially in shadows or in contours, you use the same blues in the background that you used in the contours of the cat um, or in their fur somewhere. So I do that a lot. Just putting in little details. I'm going to darken that shadow behind the stripes. Now, do you guys remember in the, la in the first session where I sprayed behind the cat, and then I put in that shadow. Now you can't really even see that shadow after I painted the background over it. So I'm gonna go back in to the background and you can see I'm painting clear water over both the back of the cat's neck and the background. And I'm going to darken that shadow in there once again. It looked really dark when I put it in, didn't it? But now you can hardly see it. And I want it to look more three-dimensional and to help give this painting some depth. I'm putting that shadow in there even darker behind the cat on the couch or whatever the chair he's sitting on. So I'm going in with pretty much pure phthalo blue right here and darkening that shadow to create some depth behind him. You can see I'm painting right over the edge of the bottom of his neck and right back up into the nape of his neck just to kind of connect it all together and not have too much of a cutout look. You really want to avoid that cutout look. And I'm putting a little bit of blue along the top of that other cat, the lighter cat, just to kind of pop that cat out since I'm in this area and I want it all to hang together well. 
Now I'm darkening that shadow even more to add even more dimension. I'm trying to make little shadow ears. That's what I was trying to do. And they're really subtle, I think. But I had wet that whole area, by the way, on the stripes area, just so the shadow stayed really soft and didn't have any hard, didn't have any hard edges. And I'm going in with, with my wisp brush now. And I'm going in with almost milk consistency paint in my brush on fairly, I think it's completely dry paper. And I'm doing this, if it is wet, it's just a little bit wet, by the way. But uh, I just want to get in some darker fur textures and really put some fur texture in there and have it nice and dark. And I've got lamp black on my brush. And I interchange using the side of my wisp brush with using the flat side of the brush. See here I'm using it almost like a rigger to make thin little strokes. And it really does make nice little thin strokes, the particular brush that I have. Can you guys hear my child singing, take me out to the ball game? <laughs> Sometimes I think this second layer that I do for commissions isn't really necessary if you're just doing an artistic piece and it actually looks fresher. If you just leave that first fresh layer that's softer because this second layer looks a little bit harsher but also it adds more detail and commission clients tend to like that because it makes them feel like it's even more realistic, which is what they want. So you could choose to stop right here. You wouldn't necessarily need to do this part of the painting if you were doing it. Now I'm using my Simply Simmons size zero rigger to go in and put in more individual hairs and fur textures. And I really want to refine that light, bright white area along right here along the top of his brow because it looks too rigid. It's like too many straight lines of, of edges and not enough variety of fur textures and things like that and colors in that area. So I go into this area and refine it quite a bit and put some more interesting textures and values in there. And now I'm gonna put in even smaller little details on his right cheek, our left, with my Simply Simmons size zero rigger. Right now I'm going to put in the tiny little for details on his nose. These hairs are really short, so you want to use a lot shorter stroke in this area. And you can either, even, you can see I put in a stroke and then I went dab, dab, dab like that. So I put a stroke, dab, 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 and put a stroke, dab, dab, dab. And that creates a really nice short, super short hair texture. So that's what I was doing there on the nose. And that works really well. It just kind of smushes that little T consistency bit of paint on dry paper. It flattens it out and gives it an interesting texture and it does make it look like short, tiny little furs. Now I'm gonna go in and paint some darker furs uh, kind of in the eyebrow area. Okay, now you see here where I'm going to connect his little eyebrow area that comes up over his nose. I connect that black to the big poofy area of black that connects to his ear and I like to do that as much as possible to connect areas of shapes it just helps a painting hang together better the more places of connection you can create and then uh, I'm just refining this ear area and one of the things I'm going to do next is you know how cats have this area right here above their eye between their eye and their ear and a lot of times they don't have a lot of fur there so for this cat, he kind of had the same kind of um, area that didn't have a lot of fur, a lot of skin showed through. So what I did in this area was I used the edge of my rigger brush to just swish over the paint surface with my, with my um, brush 
almost flat to the paper, like parallel to the paper. So I'm using the side of the brush bristles instead of the point of the brush. I'm using the side of the brush bristles. To put in that sparsely haired area. And then I'm going in and putting in some of the pretty little longer furs that are above the eye that kind of create some interesting angles and shapes. They're not eyelashes, but they're just furs that have kind of pretty contours to them. And I just use my brush kind of in a quick manner and just make a swish like that. Going in and just putting in little light tea consistency consistency places of fur here and there and here I am putting in some of the hairs in the ear and try to remember to make a little arc a tiny little arc as you make those brush strokes because usually the furs coming out of the hair are a little bit longer and they make kind of an arc and I'm using tea consistency paint in there because those little hairs are delicate. You don't want to paint a bunch of tiny little hairs. You want to paint a group of hairs at a time. I'm also getting that skin in there a little bit more pink just to kind of pop that out. And then I go into that puddle of pink paint and I draw out some longer furs to create the illusion of furs coming out of his ear, but just a few. You don't want to overdo it. It's kind of like jewelry. The furs in the in the ear, the hairs in the ear can get overdone and then there's too many little hairs. You need clumps of hairs. Remember to work in clumps, not in individual hairs. And that's true of painting a lot of different kind of hair. All right, and now I'm using just the tippity tip of my Simply Simmons brush just to put in some very fine long hairs. So you can see I'm kind of creating an arc with my hand and using a quick brush stroke just to keep it really light and simple for those little long curved hairs. And now I'm going to go in with a combination of lamp black and naphthol red and maybe a little bit of ultramarine blue just to cool it off a little bit here in the air a little bit of burnt sienna would work too and i'm just adding a darker value there on the tip of his ear and i find that when you paint cats and there's not a lot of red tones in the painting it really makes the painting pop to get those little pinks and reds in there so i do that as much as i can and still allow it to look realistic. So I put in that darker red area on the tip of his left ear, our right, and I'm just looking very closely at the reference photo. Remember when you're painting ears, there's so many little nuances and folds and tucks and curves. And if I am tired and I paint that area, I mess it up. <laughs> and so Paint the ears when you're fresh because they're a little bit more complicated. They have a lot of different areas and um, they have a lot of different curves and contours to them. So you want to try to get those right if you're painting in a realistic manner. If you're painting more loose and splashy, you can imply a lot of stuff. But for this cat and it's being a commission, I was painting it a little bit tighter. And so... Just really be sure that when you're painting an area like this, you're looking at your reference photo a lot. If you watch me paint uh, in real time, you'll see my brush is still as much as it's actually painting because when it's still, I'm looking at my reference photo and measuring distances with my eyes and making sure that I have it correct in the painting as well. So look at your reference photo, scrutinize it often. And I'm just darkening some of these red areas of skin that poke out from under the fur. Okay, I'm just refining little details in the eye and I put a tiny little splash of phthalo blue there in the middle of the eye and then I mushed it 
and just to give it a little bit of nuance of color there and differentiation of color between the blue and the yellow I just wanted to add a little bit more variety and now I'm going in with a square brush and just putting in some clear water and um, again you can see I'm really paying a lot of attention to this high contrast area between the back of the cat and the side of his face where the light is hitting those white furs, white hairs. I'm going in and refining that even more. I'm using my scrubber brush to scrub into that white fur because it's still pretty pasted on and hard edged and I wanna really soften that white area. So you can see I'm putting in chunks of soft area and leaving a few little hard edges here and there. And variety is the name of the game when you're painting a lot of different areas. You want soft edges, you want hard edges, you want dark values, you want light values. Uh, same with scrubbing, you want soft areas, you want delineated areas. So I'm just going through, and this is one of the very last steps of the painting. I almost always do. I go in and soften those harsh edges. I soften most of them. I'll leave a few hard edges, but most of them will get softened and it really helps make a painting look a bit more poetic. So I am working in this white edge area again. I keep looking back at it and just saying to myself, it still looks too straight. It still looks st too stilted. It needs more fur detail. So I'm going in with my rigger with very light tea consistency black, lamp black on my brush and just working into those white areas, um, adding some details and refinements so that it looks really highly detailed because I know the viewer's eye is gonna go straight to this area of the cat and I know I really need to have it nicely detailed. I'm just putting in long hairs here. All right, so I decided to use a little bit of white gouache on this painting to really pop little places out. So I'm going in again to this area where the light hits the side of the cat's face. You can see I'm kind of obsessed about this area, but I know that it needs to really be right. And I'm putting in little tiny details of gouache here and there on the side of his face. And I'm trying to add some variety and not make it, I felt like the line going from his ear down to the tip of his cheekbone was too straight down. And I just felt like it needed to look more natural. I remember that's what I was thinking. Get rid of that. Now you can see I'm putting in some long hairs. Adding some white hairs to the edge of his cheek down by his eye because I really want people to look in this area first and to keep coming back to this area. I'm putting tiny little whiskers. I don't want to overdo it. Remember, you want to put in little tiny details, but not too many because then it, it gets to be too much. So it's a delicate balance. Here's my gel pen. It's a Uniball gel pen and I bought mine on Amazon. I can link it below. Remember to join my Patreon if you would like my full supply list, by the way. And I'm just gonna put a few little gel marks on here. Not a lot because I don't, too much gel pen can really start to look quite stilted. Too, too jewelry-fied. How about that for a word, jewelry-fied. <laughs> All right, now I'm going in with a double zero round brush and putting tiny little eyelashes on that eye because I really want you to look at that eye and be drawn into it. And the way to draw the viewer's eye is to put tiny little nitpicky details and you just have to be careful not to do too many. And I was carefully just putting in a few tiny little wisps of eyelashes. 
here I'm going on to just continuing to add those fur textures and details with my Simply Simmons size zero rigger. Okay, and a lot of times for whiskers, what I'll do is I'll go in after I remove the masking and paint in between the whiskers and the negative space. Remember, I have talked about that before, and I'm sure a lot of you know that what negative space is, but a lot of you may not know, and negative space is like the air around an object or an animal. And so in this case, I'm painting in the negative space between the whiskers. That's called a negative space. And I'm going in to thin down those whiskers and refine them. A lot of times what I'll do is I'll put in um, clear water in between them so that they don't get too blotchy because when you paint dry on dry, a lot of times it'll just look too blotchy. So I would encourage you to do that. Whenever you paint between whiskers, put go in with clear water and put clear water between them before you go in and do the refining and painting in the negative space. And then I felt like that white cat's ear was too pointy, so I moistened the area behind it with clear water and I went in with lamp black and ultramarine blue and kind of painted around it. And sometimes the, it seems like, I think I my masking was going bad because the next painting it was really bad, if you guys remember, in the Bengal cat, remember how my masking went bad, but it seems like it left behind a little bit of residue, so I had to go in and paint around this ear, and then I had to get even thicker paint on my brush to be able to provide coverage over that area. Okay, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in to session number two on the three Siamese cat painting. And remember, next session we're going to be working on the Chocolate Point Siamese cat. So be sure to subscribe and please leave me a comment and ask questions and let me know what you think of this video and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.